Hello guys, welcome to session 7. Last session we discussed about the cross pollination by biotic agent and we discuss about the pollen pistil interactions. In pollen pistil interactions, we know that the pollen tubes will be produced and this pollen tubes will be entered into the this pistil and it will reaches to the or it will enter into the ovule. Okay. So here we're going to discussing about the entry of pollen tube into ovule. Okay. So there are three types or three methods are there. By three this method the pollen tube will be entered into the ovule. First one porogamy, second one chalazogamy and third one is it is a mesogamy. Okay, first one porogamy. Entry of pollen tube through the micropyle region is called porogamy. Okay, if the pollen tubes enters into ovule through the micropyle region is called porogamy. Example, lily. Second one is chalazogamy. Entry of pollen tube through the chalazal part is called chalazogamy. Example, casuarina. Third one, mesogamy. Entry of pollen tube through the integuments or through the funicle apart from the micropyle and chalaza. So that entry part we are calling as a mesogamy. Example is called cooker bait. Okay, we can observe in these diagrams. First one, it will show the porogamy. Second one is it is a chalazogamy. And third one diagram, it shows the mesogamy. In this slide, we're going to focusing on the double fertilizations. Okay. So as we know that for different method, the pollen tubes will be entered into the ovule. Yes. So it will reaches to the synergy cells. Yes, the pollen tube enter into the synergy cells where the pollen tube it releases its two male gametes into the cytoplasm of synergy cells. Yes, we know that. So different methods, the pollen tubes will be enter into the ovule. After that, it will reach the embryo sac. So embryo sac you consist of different parts. We know that it consists of egg apparatus. In that, it consists synergid cells okay after reaching the pollen to reaching the synergy cell it will reside its two male gametes into the cytoplasm of synergy cells okay so there are two gametes are there yes as you know there are two gametes are there one gamete it will move towards the egg cell or oospore so one gamete it will move towards the egg cell or oospore and it will fuses with the its nucleus. It fuses with the egg nucleus and the process is called syngamy. It will form syngamy. So here there is a diploid cell will be formed. Yes, there are diploid cell will be formed and that structure we are also calling as a zygote. Okay. So as you know that there are two male gametes one will move towards the egg cell and it fuses with the egg nuclei and it will form syngamy and that is a diploid in nature it will form zygote okay so one is reaches to the egg cell and one is it moves to the polar nuclei one is male gamete moves to the polar nuclei we know that already it consists of polar nuclei consists of two nuclei which is present in the it is present in the central cell so that male it will fuse with the that polar nuclei and it's become triploid primary endosperm nucleus it will form endosperm okay that is your short we are calling as a pen primary endosperm nucleus so one will it will fuses with what fuses with the egg cell and one is fused with the polar nuclei and it's become triploid in nature okay so as this involves the fusion of three haploid nuclei so it is termed as triple fusion so as you know that there are 
three nuclei will be few that is a fusion of three nuclei and that is we call as in triple fusions okay since two types of fusions yes we know that there are two types of fusions okay one is it is a syngamy and one is it is a triple fusions right so this phenomena is termed as this phenomena is termed as double fertilization okay so this event is unique to flowering plants this event is unique to flowering plants the central cell after triple fusion after the triple fusion the central cell it's become primary endosperm cells or we are so calling as a PEN and it later it develops into endosperm while the zygote develops into embryo okay PEN become endosperm and this zygote develops into embryo Hey, so come on, let's. Yes, in last slide we discussed about the double fertilization. Okay, in this slide we we'll try to understand by use of diagrams. Okay, what is the double fertilization process? Right. So double fertilization means there are two fusions will be happens. So one is it is a fuses with the egg cell that is called as syngamy, and one male gamete it is fused with the polar nuclei already it is in diploid nature that is we are calling as a triple fusion this both will this both fusions it will be happens inside the embryo sac and that process we are calling as a double fertilization okay so we can observe in diagrams first diagrams yes it is showing the embryo sac structure so in second one diagrams we can observe that the pollen tubes it will enter into the ovule it reaches to the embryo sac yes so this pollen carrying the how many gametes it's carrying two gametes okay so we can observe here right so one gamete it will fuses with the egg cell and one more gamete it moves to the yes it moves to the polar nuclei or central cells right so one it will fuses with the egg cell or egg nuclei and one is it will moves to the polar nuclei okay so second diagram we can observe here they are mentioned as the egg is fused with the yes male one male gamete that is we are calling as zygote so that process we are calling as syngamy after that the one more one more gam male gamete it fuses with the endosperm so here it is a triploid in nature so it is mentioned as 3n so zygote is a there are two nuclei so it is mentioned as 2n right so this triploid nu nuclei it will that is we are calling as a pen primary endosperm nucleus so it is we are call, this is also calling as a endosperms okay so easily we can understand by observing this diagrams so double fertilization and triple fusions okay in this slide we going to discussing about artificial hybridization okay the name only itself indicates artificial hybridization means it's not a natural process there is a intervention of humans okay so this process can be achieved by emasculation and bagging techniques now why this done to bring the improvements in the crop okay here the desired pollen grains are used for the pollination okay and stigma is get protected from the contamination or unwanted pollen okay first we understand what is the meaning of emasculation yes if the flower is bisexual if the flower is bisexual here anthers are removed from the bud before the anther dehiscence okay here the anthers are get removed yes get removed before 
and thus are get dissense by using forcep. This is called emasculation means simple. It is a removal of anther is from the bisexual flower before anther dissense by using the forceps is called emasculation. Okay. After removal of this anther, that flower have to be covered by suitable bag. It is generally made up of butter paper uh, to avoid the unwanted contamination or it will avoid the unwanted pollen should be drop on the stigma because here we require what? We require desired pollen grains or selected pollen grains to be transferred. For that, they are covered by the suitable bag and this process we are calling as a bagging. First one is emasculation, removal of anther. Second one is bagging, means the flowers will be covered by the butter paper. Okay. When the stigma of bag flower attains a receptivity. When this bagged uh, flower stigma attain receptivity, the mature pollen grains are get transfer or it is transfer and it is adjusted on the stigma and again this flower is rebagged and it is allowed for the further development. Okay. If the parent produces unisexual flowers, Yes, if the parent produces unisexual flowers, there is no need for emasculation. Okay. Emasculation required only when it is a bisexual flower. In case of unisexual means both will be our separate flowers. So there is no need of emasculation, but the female flower should be get covered by the bags to avoid the yes, to avoid the contamination or unwanted pollen should be dropped. Okay. So this entire technique we are calling as a artificial hybridization. Why it is done? To bring the improvement in the crops. Okay. This can be achieved by emasculation and bagging techniques. In this slide, uh, we are going to understand the artificial hybridization by these diagrams. Right. So, artificial hybridization, as we know that it is a, not a natural process. Okay, there is involvement of humans, right? So here, the this artificial hybridization is done to bring the improvement in the crops. For that, they have to follow so, some technique, and that techniques we are calling as a emasculation and bagging. Okay, so emasculation means it is a removal of the anthers from the bisexual suppose the flower is bisexual where the the anthers will be get removed by the help of forcep and that step you are calling as a emasculation after that that female part or the, that flower will be get covered by the yes it is covered by the butter papers that techniques we are calling as a bagging now why this cover means to avoid the unwanted pollinations for that it is covered by the yes it is covered by the butter papers okay so here in below diagrams we can observe that there is a hand pollinations means it is uh, done by the humans the selected pollens will be get transfers to the yes stigma part after that it is uh, again these flowers are get it is a uh, covered by the butter papers that is calling as a bagging yes bagging after the hand pollution and allowing for the formation of fruit so this technique entire technique we are calling as a or entire process we are calling as artificial hybrid digestions by this method yes we can improve the crops or we can bring the some improvements in the crops So in this slide, we discuss about post-fertilization in structure and events. Now, what does it mean by post-fertilization? Means after the fertilization, whatever will have things will happen. That is occurring as post-fertilization. Okay. Soon after the fertilization, the flower will get convert into fruit, or it is replaced by a fruit. Then, what will happens to parts of the flowers? 
okay so calyx the calyx it is generally false of okay in some uh, plants like solanaceae their calyx may be remain for the longer time for example like tomato okay brinjal there we can find the the calyx will be remain okay so then what happens to corolla corolla also falls off what about stamens stamens also falls off the style and stigma they are become shrivel and wither away okay the integuments okay we know that the ovules are consist of outer and inner integuments these integuments they are become seed coat testa and tegma okay so micropyle right so what happens to micropyle the micropyle will be remain as pore in the testa then what about synergid and antipodal cells they are become degenerate the whatever the leucelus is present it is a absorb or it is left as a perisperm now zygote this this zygote it is develop into embryo pen primary endosperm nucleus and it is develops into endosperm so later it is endosperm it is a utilize when it is in the seed conditions okay so what happens to ovules ovules are develops into seed what about ovary ovary is develops into a fruit so it is a homework slide so first question is define emasculation second question what is bagging third question what is a chalazogamy next question what is explain pollination in yakka plant fifth one define hymenoptery feeling sixth one explain pollen pistil interaction seventh one what is a self incompatibility eighth one write the characteristic of entomophilus flowers explain double fertilization and triple fusions last one write advantages and disadvantages of cross pollination